Not super horrific, but it might be worth a laugh. In Pathfinder 2nd Edition, your character can become confused. When confused, they randomly attack anyone near them, friend or foe. However, if they take damage, they get to roll a d20 with no modifiers, and if they roll 11 or more, they snap out of it. So it's quite normal for the PC's allies to slap them, or hit them with light attacks to enable them to break the confusion. In today's session, our barbarian failed his confusion recovery check. Ten times in a row. The actual enemies were bemused, as most of the party casters and supporters were taking turns slapping the barbarian. Or trying to, but missing. For most of the fight. This is like the D&D equivalent of that video where someone tried to slap a chicken until it was fully cooked. Difference being the chicken is half your party's damage output, and if you don't cook it in time, you're gonna get cooked by a bunch of bandits. As for starting the combat confused, let's be honest, that just sounds like your average barbarian. My name's Jacob Crow, and welcome to the Crow's Perch. Let's just get this out of the way, I'm sick, okay? Literally the day after Thanksgiving, so yeah. But if hustle culture has taught me anything, it's that regardless of my physical or mental condition, I gotta get that bag, baby! Making money moves! <laughs> Please subscribe, I need to feed my family. <laughs> what were you? Wingroys is key. Have you ever been kicked out of a game? Did you ever just say or do something so cringy that it keeps you up at 3am, knowing that it's the sole reason why your friends don't invite you over to their house to play anymore? While you describe this horrible experience, uh, please type this entire story into the subreddit. This could be great content. Ghoulish audience exploitation aside, in this story, we follow a player who was kicked from a game. But the reason why? Well, it's gonna ruffle your feathers. And so, without further ado, Let's gather up a murder and dive right into this story. Content warning for bullying and homophobia. Context. I was a player in a group that was running a D20 Star Wars themed game. This took place in 2012. Through a friend of mine within an already established gaming group, I was invited to join in their brand new campaign. One of the novel concepts, where all of us were going to be playing a different anthropomorphic character. A furry scaly, more or less. Some chose a Trandoshan, whereas I chose an established fox race called an Amaron. They're like goblins from World of Warcraft, mixed with the Ferengi from Star Trek. I played a one-eyed, one-armed cyborg Amaran, based off my long-established character, Damien. In this setting, Damien showed promise within the Empire. When a group of Imperial scout troopers saw him dazzling locals, with an exhibition of long-distance marksman training. The lead trooper challenged Damien to a contest to see who could outshoot the other. If the trooper won, Damien would have to submit to slavery. If Damien won, then the trooper, on his honor no less, would put in a suggestion that he receive Imperial Scout training. Well, Damien kicked butt, and the trooper held his word. He was taken to the Imperial base on World, and trained. He excelled. Unknown to him, he was being groomed to use his knowledge of his homeworld to hunt down and eliminate leaders of his own people, in the name of the Empire, of course. When this became clear, Damien shot and killed the squad he was partnered with, and went on the run. This was the circumstance of his joining the group. Damien was contacted by Joho the Hutt, the Hutt had heard tales of Damien's defiance of the Empire, and skill with a sniper rifle. He was offered a chance to join his cartel, and turn to a life of high risk, high reward crime. This could allow him to build a reputation, and eventually kick the Empire off his home world for good. Catch being, well, he's a Hutt. Damien took the offer, and arrived at Joho's place. He was escorted by a rather dodgy Rodian, and disarmed. This is where Damien is stood before the hut. Joho said in all his years of criminal enterprise that reputation does not always equal actual skill. Word on my talents were good and reliable, but I'd have to prove it. He told me to kill that Rodian before he kills me. The Rodian drew his blaster 
and felt I was a goner. Well, what neither knew was I'd paid for an onboard vibro knife on my cyber arm. One they missed. I flicked the thing out and in a couple rounds killed the Rodian. Good riddance. Before I could gloat, numerous stealth guards bombarded Damien with stun blasts and knocked him out cold. As he drifted unconscious, Joho laughed and said, Welcome to the cartel. <laughs> Enter the rest of the group. The following game session where everyone else had a very similar jumping in scenario, we all woke up inside a holding cell, reinforced with ray shields. Damien saw a large group of fellow aliens, and all of us had been undressed to our undergarments. Joho was smart, and removed Damien's cyber arm. It was detachable, so no real harm done. One alien's description, and let's call him Blitz, was that of a big burly and masculine white wolf. Rippling muscles, real Mr. Universe era Arnold or Conan the Barbarian vibes. When it was Damien's turn to speak, he sat up and rubbed the side of his head, and said, Well, if I said this was the first time I woke up next to naked in a dungeon with a bunch of strangers I'd never met, then I'd be lying. And he chuckled. With absolutely zero warning, Blitz's player growls and declares he stomps over to Damien and shouts, Shut the flip up, homophobic slur. He declares an attack roll. I ask if I could have an initiative roll beforehand to attempt to avoid this, and the DM says no. I have no choice but to take the surprise beating for a round. Well, I'm crit and knocked unconscious immediately. I deflated real quick. Okay, if this is the level of insecurity Blitz is working on, this story is definitely going to be a wild ride. Let's keep going. As that game session progressed, on that day, it became clear I was not getting back up. When introductions were done, an unidentified bounty hunter in Mandalorian-like armor said we were all being summoned to Joho's chamber. When Damien didn't get up, the hunter said that all new initiates had to come along, and if Damien was too lazy to wake up from my nap, then to just drag me. So, Blitz did just that. He literally grabbed Damien's tail and dragged me to Joho's chamber like a kid with a radio flyer wagon. I'm still unconscious. We meet Joho, who pulls the whole I have a non-specific plan for expanding my empire, wealth, and power. You're all going to help. <laughs> you help me, I make you rich. I hope you get what you want. Typical broker-style NPC. You get the drift. Joho then says we all have to agree. That's when Blitz decides to pull a weekend at Bernie's and puppeted my unconscious character into agreeing. I wanted to know why I was still out cold, but all players plus DM explained I just was, and I'd know when I was awake. Damien was finally woken up at the beginning of game two, to be given back starting gear, and to be given the choice of either a weapon upgrade or an armor upgrade. I asked if a bionic implant, similar to a scout trooper's internal HUD display, could be made into an artificial eye for Damien's missing eye instead, to be hidden behind his patch. Joho agreed, and he was given his new cyber eye, clothing, and weapons back. We're told that we're going to take his armored troop transport to an oasis city. There, a rival hut had kidnapped the captain of his ship. This ship was biometrically keyed to that pilot. No pilot, no ship. We boarded the transport. Mid-travel, Blitz began to ask what everyone could do in battle. One by one, they said things like, I'm a great melee combatant, or I have the force. When it got to Damien's turn, which was evident to me due to the group slash DM looking at me, Damien began to speak. Well, I'm trained in the arts of stealth, subterfuge, and long distance sniper maneuvers. I am skilled at infiltration and... I thought I made myself clear, homophobic slur. Nobody fucking cares. Shut the fuck up. If you talk again without me telling you to, you die. Once again, 
Blitz's player said he wanted to surprise attack Damien. Once again, I asked for initiative prior, even pointing out that the cyberware granted me insight bonuses to not only sense motive, but initiative rolls. To my surprise though, the DM denied me a second time, stating that I never stated I was rolling sense motive prior to the attack. I argued, why would I? And said everyone was talking, and that would have interrupted the game. I was told, too bad, so sad. So Blitz rolls, crits again, and big boots Damien right in the face, knocking him cold a second time. No one came to his defense. They treated my beating no differently than someone swatting a fly and continued the planning phase. I spent the rest of game two unconscious and unable to act. All I could do was idly make snoring noises while the rest of the table played. Game three rolls around and we get to Oasis. They find it is way more fortified than Joho initially thought. Guards at every gate. Guards on the wall. Guards on the towers. You get the idea. The party begins to lament that this is really bad. The Sith Juggernaut actually says, Man, it's a real shame nobody here has the ability to take out people from long range without being detected. Boy, we're screwed. W w w w were they kidding me? I was about to speak up when a different player pointed out my unconscious character. Hey, he's got a sniper rifle. Blitz authorizes me to be woken up. Damien wakes up, pissed. He says nothing but glares. Blitz tells Damien that Oasis is just over that dune, and I needed to take out the guards. I was going to do that, or else. I say nothing. This makes him mad, and demands to know why I'm not talking. He grabs Damien by the throat, hoists him up, and points a vibro knife at his throat. Still, Damien says nothing. Why isn't he talking? Blitz bellows, loud enough to possibly be heard by the very guards we were wanting to avoid. One of the other players reminds Blitz that he said if I spoke out of turn ever again, or without permission, that he'd kill Damien. That's probably why. Yeah, no shit. So Blitz says I can talk. Damien tells them that he does, in fact, have the skills to take out the guards in such a manner that he'd never present himself as a target. He could sow chaos and disarray with various techniques, and get everyone inside without a fight. Blitz said to get on it, or Damien would be thrown over the dune as a distraction. And I did it! For the first time I was able to do something. Using a combination of equipment, feats, and a real hot d20, Damien pulled a feat right out of Call of Duty. The other players seemed impressed. Blitz moaned the entire time called Damien a coward, saying all snipers are cowards, yada yada. Damien didn't engage, because he was working. When the last exterior guard was taken down, Damien said they had a clear path in. The party makes it past the first wall, into an outer sector of Oasis. There was a second guard wall similar to the first, but only a pair of guards in front of that gate. I said my skills would allow me to get past them, and gather recon from within. Once in, I could text back the layout and they could go from there, while I created a distraction. The party agreed. I asked the DM if this counted as a stressful situation, meaning would a roll be required here or could I take a 20? He said I absolutely could. My score for stealth with a 20 added to it was insane for our level, and it was exceptionally unlikely I'd have been spotted. So Damien begins to slink his way over. As soon as Damien got within 10 feet, the guards immediately rear on him. What are you doing? Intruder! The pair pull out stun blasters and attack Damien. I ask once again, could I have rolled sense motive? He said no. Initiative? Nope. The two guards roll. Both are crits, both are max damage for non-lethal, Damien's KO'd yet again, and the pair drag Damien off. Now the party seemed… happy, in and out of character. Blitz even high-fived one of the other players. 
the DM informs me that due to my repeated negligence, a lack of roleplay, and generally not contributing anything worthwhile to the game, that I was being removed from the game. Damien will be killed off screen, and I'd not be allowed to introduce a new character. I was told to pack up and leave, and to kindly never show up again. I was stunned. I asked to know why. The explanation I was given was that my character was constantly in the state of incapacitation, and therefore, I wasn't really doing much. Wow, DM, I wonder why that is. Maybe it was from all the bullshit PvP you allowed, with a player that was pretty flocking clearly, faking his roles to get free crits. But what do I know? I'm just a bird. Damien had failed to see the attacks coming, failed to survive them, and with the exception of my initiation, and taking out the guards, that I hadn't done a single thing worthwhile. My constant state of unconsciousness dragged down the game. That, my constant provoking of Blitz, forced his character to beat me to the point of near brain damage? Th th this sounds like listening to a domestic abuse case from the perspective of the abuser. Uh, no, Judge, you don't understand. My wife, uh, I, mean, I mean that bitch, <laughs> she looked to be funny one time. She had it coming, Your Honor. I'm innocent, you see? You would have done the same thing! I was told I was toxic, and nobody really liked me anyway. Now, I look to my friend that invited me in the first place for backup. This absolute trog agreed with them. He said that I just wasn't learning my place, and it was better for me to leave. Didn't have to tell me twice. I left, went home, and, not going to lie, I cried. Yes, I, a grown-ass man, cried, because I'd never felt so confused and betrayed in my life. Since that day, I have never gamed with a random group again, and likely never will. TLDR, I get invited to a gaming group for a friend. I roll up my character, and as soon as he's introduced to the party, he's repeatedly beaten unconscious by the party's big bruiser. He's beaten over and over again, told never to speak, even after he flawlessly performs in the one act he was ever able to perform. The DM uses executive privilege to kill off my character. I'm told literally no one in the group likes me, and that I should have recognized this, and that I had ruined their experience by even showing up. Edit. I feel compelled to add this here. Considering it is a fair question I get asked, I suffer and have suffered the vast majority of my life with borderline personality disorder. One difficulty that comes with the condition is a fear of abandonment, a willingness to sometimes ignore dangers, abuse, and other things to feel wanted and appreciated. I've really fucking struggled my whole life with this, going literally as far back as when I learned I'm adopted. I was also raised to try to see the good in people, and be good to others. While not at my own expense, this was a value my mother's side of the family believed in. My dad's side of the family, well, weren't available for comment after his 1993 suicide. I put up with this for three weeks because I hoped that this abuse would end. It didn't. I can't always get up and walk out immediately. At this time, I had no other gaming prospects and top that off with I trusted my friend. I thought it would have gotten better. Some people take a while to run from a burning building than others, and sadly, I'm just one of those people. I don't mind being asked why it took three sessions to bounce. Where I do draw the line is people criticizing me for trying to give them a couple extra chances to change their behavior. Wow, just wow. To the OP of this post, I really hope you cut this friend out of your life. Not just for not backing you up in the end, but that they knowingly invited you into an abusive group and didn't speak up about their antics the entire time. This entire group belongs in a dumpster in Avernus. <laughs> From this friend, the DM, and of course Blitz. Horrible, awful, garbage people, not even worth the small amount of time that you gave them. I've had stories that made me question my sanity, made me question the OP, made me cringe out of my soul. 
but this is probably the first story that has just filled me with rage. I cut out like 20 minutes of rants in between awful moments of this story just because it made it impossible to follow. I have little advice other than to stay far, far away from groups like this. As I've said before on this channel, you deserve better, so don't sell yourself short. No D&D is better than whatever the flock this was. But to my viewers, thank you for listening to today's stories. And if you like these stories and would like to see more of them, then please like this video and consider subscribing to the channel. Made it this far, why not leave a comment? And if you can't think of a comment, then leave the comment garbage person. So I know you made it to the end of today's video. And if you want to support the channel even further, then feel free to hit the join button or sign up on the Crow's Perch Patreon, where you can support the channel for as little as a dollar a month. Or for a few bucks more, you can join patrons like our Counts of Quills. Like Aaron Kados, Sharkay, Kirito Kazuto, Critical Kunik, Evix, King Drazil, Christian Pip, Cosmosis, Rikus, Vincent, Haley Thompson, Zero Fang, and Netscape Navigator. Alright, I'm not gonna do I'm not gonna do a special voice for the Barons of Beaks. I know, I'm sorry. I'll I'll get you guys next time. Just pretend I'm doing a really cool impression of your favorite actor. Anyway, Barons of Beaks, like Brittany Mars, Rim Grim. Raytheon of the Nerd, Sarah Warren, Spectre Spark, Ars Tarak, Ghost Legan, Mr. Hypocritical, Javon Megan, Jesse Shodell, Kuntos Weasel, Moed is Mao, Tech Blog, Currister, Cardispawn, A Modest Pastry, Jester King, Lord Rend, Gibber Woods, Wormy, Den of the Drake, Mickey Eatley, and Anya. I, I can do it. I can do it. Duke's Feathers, 10 bucks. Let's go. Patreon. Woo! Uh, Yodi Gang. Craig Card. Hexblading. Kive Mind. The School Bus. Mirage Vaxis. Quinn. Blue Zotters. Jared Zemlin. Doc Salty 96. Matthew Moquini. And Acroth. And with all of that out of the way, I leave you with this week's Art of the Week from user Miss Tiger Beans on the Crow's Perch Discord. Inspired by my Pentiment live streams, which you should totally watch if you want to touch grace and acquire maidens. But with all of that out of the way, I'll see you next time. As the crow flies.